Welcome back to Learning Functional JavaScript Section 6, Recursion. In this section, we will explore recursion in JavaScript. We'll learn what it is, what it's good for, and also consider some limitations on JavaScript's part. Finally, we'll go deep into some creative ways of working around some of the limitations. This is video 6.1, Recursive Thinking. In this section, we will get familiar with the ancient art of recursion, functions calling themselves. We'll start out by writing a few small recursive helper functions in this video, then dive into a more involved example from the adventure game in the next video. Finally, we'll go deep in the third video, looking into tail calls and trampolining. But what is recursion? The textbook definition is see recursion. Ha! Just kidding. A recursive function is one that calls itself. Let's consider an example. We'll start with a familiar iterative loop and convert it to a recursive solution. This is a straightforward iterative way of printing the numbers contained in an array. We discussed some ways that this style of code is not ideal in the beginning of this course. While we've seen solutions using the array iterative methods before, we will now attempt a recursive solution. Instead of a loop, the print numbers function will now call itself as long as there are more numbers in the array. If we had an array of three numbers, one, two, and three, this function would start by printing the first number, one, and then call itself with an array of two numbers, two, and three. This call would print the second number, two, and call print numbers again, this time with an array containing only the last number. That call would print the final number and call print numbers a final time with an empty array. Print numbers does nothing when the array is empty and so we are done. This is neither a useful nor a very interesting function. However, it does illustrate the basic point of recursion. After this example, it should be clear that any recursive function needs at least two cases, a terminating case that does not include a call to itself and a next step which does include a call to itself. For the next example, let's implement a recursive sum function. Recursion is an interesting approach because it helps us break a problem into smaller parts, especially when the input takes the form of a list. In those cases, formulating a recursive solution is a three-step process. First, find the case that terminates the function. Second, figure out the process we need to apply to a single item, and third, figure out how to reduce the input to the rest and send those for another pass through the function. The terminating case for the sum function is the empty list. When we get an empty list, the sum is zero. If the length is not zero, the sum is the first number in the list plus the sum of the rest of the list. We can use a couple of functions to make this read better. We already have the first function from before. In addition, we will need a function to grab the rest of the list, everything following the first element. With this in place, we can retry the sum function. A recursive function that processes the first element of a list and then makes a recursive call with the rest of the list is sometimes referred to as a list eater. This pattern turns out to be applicable to a whole bunch of problems. We could, for instance, use it to implement join. We'll ignore the separator in our first attempt. That was no fun. That's the exact same function as sum, thanks to JavaScript's plus operator doing both addition and concatenation. Adding the separator character makes things a little bit harder. This almost works. However, it adds a separator after the last item as well, which it shouldn't do. This function needs an additional special case. We will do one more list eater before moving on. Let's tackle a case we'd normally use map to solve, extracting the emails from a list of users. The make list function does not exist. If we didn't care about ordering, we could have called concat on the result of calling get emails. Unfortunately, we do care about ordering, so we need a helper function. 
This function accepts a first and a rest and combines them back into a list. List eaters, like the past three functions we saw, are very common in the family of programming languages called Lisp, short for list processing. However, recursion is useful in many other applications as well. Recursion is an excellent way of traversing tree structures like file directories. A directory can contain files and more directories. Our last example in this video will be a function that returns a list of all the entries in the directory tree. We start by reading out the contents of the directory and put them all in the list and return it. In order to get all the entries in nested directories, however, we need to loop through the entries and recurse into directories. We can use fs.stat to get the type of each entry. This looks promising enough, but there are problems ahead. Let's say we instruct this to find all the files in slash project slash adventure game. When it recurses into any of the directories contained in the adventure game directory, it's going to try to read the relative directory name. That doesn't work. We need to make sure we pass over the fully qualified directory name. And that's all there is to it. Using path.join to tack on the parent directory name makes this a general purpose directory crawler. It's worth noting that if your file system contains temporary files like those produced by certain text editors and other programs, the stat call might throw an exception. That can be handled easily enough, but we won't dive deeper into this particular function now. In this video, we have familiarized ourselves with recursion and seen it in use both as an alternative to iterative looping and as a tool to solve inherently recursive problems such as walking tree structures such as file system hierarchies. It should be noted that wherever iterator methods such as map, filter and reduce or some form of function composition is adequate to solve the problem at hand, they are usually a better choice than recursion. In the next video we will look at a more involved example from the adventure game.